What's up guys, my name is Zebrix and welcome to the finale of The Zebrix Show Season 2. If you don't know what The Zebrix Show is, it's a show where I interview different members of the online LEGO community, whether it's through YouTube or Instagram or other social media platforms. And um, as I've already said, this is the final episode of Season 2 on paper. So technically, this is the 10th episode since the start of the summer and I'm ending it quite literally, at the start of the school year. So I went from the end of the school year to the beginning of the school year. And I think that that's how I'm going to do seasons from now on. So it's been quite a long time, quite a few months, and I've gotten 10 episodes done, which is pretty awesome. Now, that's not to say that there won't be more episodes um, throughout the school year. It's just that, obviously, I'm going to be busy with schoolwork, and there may not be as many episodes. So I've got a few people rounded up that I may be able to get on the podcast at some point. But it's not going to be at scheduled times. I'll probably still upload them on Saturdays at noon though. But anyways, today I'm going to be talking to Ken Marlowe Bricks. Um, who was happy enough to be on here for the um, final episode. So um, would you like to introduce us to yourself and your YouTube channel? So yeah, Zach, thank you for having me. Um, so yeah, I'm Ken Marla Bricks, or just uh, Marla Bricks on YouTube. Um, you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, um, and I'm also on uh, Bricklink, and I even have my own website, uh, which is marlabricks.com. So you can uh, check me out any of those places. Feel free to send me a message, ask me questions, whatever you want. And uh, thank you again for having me. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Um, I'll have, as usual, his Instagram his YouTube, and um, now that I know he has a website, I'll probably link the website down in the description as well, so you can go check out all three um, and follow him on all those platforms. So, um, and also, I will be linking the playlist down in the description for this entire series, and also all the YouTube channels of the past people we've done, which I'll name them off at the end um, just to um, thank them. But um, anyways, let's get started right away with some starter questions. So, do you remember um, when you started building with Lego and what some of your first sets were? Um, I don't remember how old I was or which exactly was the first set, but it was in the um, probably late 1980s. Um, so, like, the, the big one that I remember getting pretty early on was, um, let me find the set number here on my list, there it is. It's a 6380, the Emergency Treatment Center. Um, it's a little uh, single base plate hospital set, and uh, that was from 87, I want to say. Um, so so I, that was uh, one of the earlier, larger sets that I remember getting. And then um, after that, I got the, the next big one that I remember getting was the International Jet Port. That's uh, 6396, and that was came out in 1990. Um, it was, had a cool little, uh, it had like four or five base plates with it. So I had a runway and a helicopter pad. Wow. Came with a, hel a helicopter, an airplane, and a little uh, terminal building. And I, I really liked that set. I can, uh, you know, to, to kind of a testament as to how well the Lego was built, at least back then, you know, you can actually, I can actually take that airplane and I can throw it across the room and have like a little airplane crash and I could rebuild it. And that's, that's what I did. I just rebuilt that thing constantly. Um, so, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And the other interesting thing is that that Mercy Treatment Center that base plate only came in three sets, and I actually had one of the other ones, which was the um, 1990s space shuttle with the pad and the crane, and that's that red gantry crane. And that's the 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 um, base plate's a like kind of like a driveway, so it kind of comes into the middle, and then it kind of goes off to the to the left side. So that the only other set that that base plate ever came in, in that green color with the gray driveway, was a police station, which I ha do not own, and I I never got that one. Is that so. set that you're referring to, that emergency treatment center? Is it the um, mm -hmm. the one that's non minifig scale, or had the the no the it the style? minifigs were out by then, so it is minifig scale. Um, it has a little uh, a little ambulance. It has um, I have a tiny little thumbnail here I'm looking at, but it has I believe it was two patients and either two or three medical staff. Okay. And yeah, they're all they're all standard modern style minifigs. Okay, I have a um. I got some handy downs from my cousins a few years back that, um, I guess, I mean, some of them are just graduating from college now or have already graduated college. 
So, but they had a, um, I guess they had, I don't know if it's handy down to them, but they had a, um, a hospital that was, I think it came with the old style minifigures that had the arms and the legs molded in and they okay, couldn't yeah, move that, them. It had to have been handed down to them then. Yeah. That's old. Those, yeah, those were, I want to say in the seventies. Yeah. And that was, that was, so the, these were from my childhood and I, I graduated high school 20 years ago. So, um, you know, I've been out of college for a while. So if they're just graduating college, it's, yeah, it's probably a bit of a hand, handy down from, to them. Yeah. I'm assuming their parents must have had it. Yeah. But, probably. um, but yeah, I, I just, I don't, it wasn't together when I got it, but I have the instructions and I, I don't remember if it came, it came with a, a base plate, like an eight by 16, I think, but I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. That's, and that's really cool. I only have one so far that I've found, I only have one minifig torso that has the molded arms. So that's, I have that's a, very, very cool find. A few in my collection, but they're they're so few and far between and I don't think they're in an organizer right now, so I'd have to go digging to find them. But I may have to put them together and make a video with them at some point because they're pretty yeah, cool. That'd be, that'd be cool. But um that's awesome. So do you uh, remember when you started your YouTube channel and who or what kind of inspired you to do that? Yeah, that's pretty easy. Um so uh, Hope Castle or Reed, he is um, he, he he founded or helped found um, Denlug, the Denver Lego user group, which I'm a member of, and so I started following some of his streams a couple of years ago, and then uh, two years ago I joined him for uh, the 72 hour live stream, and that was the first time I actually participated in a stream, and I was using my personal YouTube channel, and a bunch of people started following me. I'm like, whoa, you know, hey, you don't, you don't need to follow my, my personal channel. There, there's no videos on here. Um, so I went ahead and uh, created a specific channel for doing Lego building, and that's that's how this one was born. That's awesome. And you've been on, I think you've been on both of my 72-hour live streams. Yep. Yeah, I think so. So last year was my one year. So basically, the 72-hour live stream becomes my becomes my YouTube anniversary. So last year was my one year anniversary. And yeah, you and I streamed back to back, and and so we were able to to be on each other's stream for that. And then the same thing happened again this year, right? Um, I don't think we were back to back, but okay. Um, because you, you were early, because oh, I was you were early yeah, morning on the change, first day. Yeah, it did change days. So this this year I was on a different day, and I was right before uh, Kevin Hinkle. Yes, so, yeah. I remember that. I tried to watch all the ones that day, and I yeah. I think I got through maybe. It's hard. It's hard. I, I think I got to like Lego Lemaniac. Jump, jump in and out. Yeah, I was able to just jump in and out of, out of them randomly. It's really hard to do. Yeah, it's. It gets like, like I enjoy watching them, and it's not that I don't enjoy it, but it's it's so hard to sit in front of a computer screen and type in the comments all day long. Yeah, yeah, but, you got to take a break. Yeah, I think Butt Chop made it to, every comment section or something. Is what yeah, I've heard, he, but... he must have taken just little cat naps all day. It's, yeah, it's he said he used to slept for like thirty minutes at a time, like twenty times. But, um, yeah, it's it's a really fun stream. If y'all haven't heard of the seventy two hour live stream, I would um, recommend checking it out next year. It usually, I think, takes place in June or July. I think it's July, but um, yeah, I think it's the pretty much the week after the Fourth of July is usually when I've seen it happen. Yeah, that makes it's, sense. That's how it kind of works out. Yeah, um, so it's it's basically the first or second weekend of July, um, right. but I'd highly recommend checking it out next year, um, and if you want a taste of what it's like, there's um, various YouTubers have them uploaded on their YouTube channels of their live streams from this past July, me and Ken included, so um, you can go check those out too, but um, yeah, that's always a lot of fun going to the 72-hour live stream. It's... Yep. It's so, so great. So yeah, Reed got me in, and then uh, Brick Smith kind of got me hooked. You know, I he he kind of you know like he does with everyone, he kind of adopted me into the family, and you know let me join his streams and stuff like that, and just kind of kind of took off from there. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hope Castle is my. Um, uh, he's an avid ice bear collector. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Um, my viewers know that I'm a I'm a huge Chima fan, um, and I was thrilled to get that Chima art print from Kevin Hinkle the other day. I saw that. That looks really nice. Yeah, it's 
It's so cool. But um, Hope Castle has about 700 ice bears. So it's, it's pretty crazy. But um, hopefully one day I can maybe get at least 100 ice bears would be nice. Maybe 10 would be nice. But, yeah, um, I don't know. I, I know I have a few Chima, Chima characters, and I really need to go through my minifigs and rebuild them because I'm really curious to see what they are and what they look like. Yeah. Um, but, but um, yeah, I just have, haven't gotten to that yet. Yeah, the Chima figures, they're so interesting because they're not like the typical figures where they've got the specific head design with the, um, the typical eyes and the typical mouth. And stuff like that. But the Chima figures, if you take the mask off of them, or what's actually their head, they've got the weirdest designs. It's like, I've never understood why they didn't make a molded head for them. Because if they had, if they were going to make a new mold for their head already, why didn't they just make a new mold for the head instead of doing a creepy face underneath the normal... Right. Thing. So you think you think they should have made the face and like kind of helmet all one piece? I think that would have been better. Okay. But yeah, I think I've seen a few of the faces. Like I said, I need to go through and rebuild them because I don't really know what parts go to which. And I think I've seen a few of the faces because I've seen a few faces that I'm like, that's a really weird looking minifig head. <laughs> I bet it's part of the Chima series. Yeah, they tend to be that. Um, they're pretty recognizable. But um, but yeah, I've got. I actually just went through and put all my Chima stuff today in a box. I was trying to organize it um, so I could make a video at some point. But um, just trying to organize by theme recently with minifigures nice. and accessories. So, um, But anyways, so I know that you build a lot of Lego Technic stuff from what I've seen. And you're, you really like that. So is that one of your favorite themes? Um, you know, yeah, it kind of seems that way with the with the seventy two hour live stream because <laughs> last year I did the uh, the big giant bucket wheel excavator and this year I did the big giant. Uh, you did the RC uh, car, right? The RC car, right? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I did the RC car. Um, it's it's fun doing those sets and I like the um, I like the gearing and I like the the, the motorization on them. Um, it's for me that's that's a really good way to kind of learn about gearing. Um, I work in automation professionally so i feel like i should know more about gearing than i do um, but i actually work on the electrical side not the mechanical so it gives me a chance to kind of learn more about the mechanical and uh, so that's that's a lot of fun well, that's cool um, i don't i mean I, I i don't really feel like i do a lot of technique um those are those are kind of the big sets that i have the other ones i have are like i have like the the bmw motorcycle um, and kind of the, the bigger creator cars, I guess, you know, the, the BMW motorcycle, the Volkswagen van, the, um, Volkswagen Beetle, you know, those are kind of technic based. Um, you know, I, I guess they're kind of a mix of technic and brick built based, but, um, yeah, true technic. I mean, I guess it's, it'd be like the BMW motorcycle and, and those, those two sets I did during the 72 hour live stream. I can't think offhand of any other like true technic sets that I have. The, 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 it's unfortunately the price point's a little bit high and, you know, I just, I have a lot of Technic pieces from, from used bulk that I've gotten, but trying to put it all together and everything, it really takes a different mindset. And, uh, so it's, it's, you know, and it gets, and it gets really interesting. I mean, you know, when I sit down and start actually using it and building it, you know, I have to build like a support structure or whatever else for one of my other brick built builds. And I start using the Technic pieces. It, it's very educational and it's, it's very interesting kind of diving into it, but Truly, to get into the gearing and stuff is, is I'm still, I feel like I'm still a novice on that side. Yeah. I don't quite know what gears line up with other gears on like a Technic axle right. basis. I don't know if you'd call it a ruler, a Technic ruler. Yeah, but, and um, there's, there's books out there oh, that, there's, will, that will guide yeah. you on all that kind of stuff. And and I don't know if I've bought one yet. I don't think I have, but it's it's definitely on my on my wish list somewhere that to, to get one of those books and to dive in and, and learn all the technic rules and and baselines to, to be able to start really using using it more in depth. Yeah, I mean, when you really start putting gears together and working on a, a motorization contraption, there's some serious math that goes into oh, technic. Yeah. It's 
it gets insane. Yeah, you see some of these mocks that people make with these crazy um, movements. Yeah. You see how they built it. It's, I mean, I look at JK Brickwork stuff. Oh, um, yeah. And I'm blown away every time. Yeah. I don't yeah, it, 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 it's I, I know exactly what you're talking about. This stuff's really amazing. And one thing I do really want to get into um, on the technic side is the great ball contraptions. Oh, yes. UCs. I've seen those. And, you know, I've started kind of stockpiling parts here and there for it. Um, and there's a lot of great guides out there, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of guides on all the standard modules. Um, and I, I just want to sit down and start building them and see, again, just as a learning tool, see how they go together. And, and then I can kind of expand on it from there and hopefully make my own module one day. Yeah. I've got a few of those little Technic shooter balls that come in the like the hero factory and stuff and i've thought about sitting down and trying to like just come up with my own original great ball con um contraption yep but i mean i've seen the videos of those at brick fair i haven't been to brick fair but i've seen those videos those 20 yeah. 30 minute videos and it's like how do yeah. so many people make these but it's it's pretty cool to see those. If you haven't seen those yet, um, just YouTube search Lego Great Ball Contraption and just watch the first one you see, and they are yeah incredible. Yeah, Beyond the Brick likes to uh, do the tours at, at uh, Brick World and Brick Fair and all that and walk around the GVC tables, and they're, you know, it's it's just amazing to sit there and watch, and they talk about all the all the machines and all the problems and all the fixes and everything else, and it's, it's really cool stuff. Yeah, there are some amazing designs that people come up with that I don't think my brain could ever even yeah. dream of coming up with. But um, anyways, yeah. Earlier you talked about the um, the creator sets and the Technic sets. Are there any other yeah. favorite themes you have or themes you well, collect a lot of? So the during, so I did have a Dark Age, um, probably from, I, I mean, I probably still messed with my Lego into my mid-teenage years sometime. Um, I mean, I don't know when I ever actually put them up. Um, probably when I was like around 17 or 18. Um, and then I gave them, gave, gave them to my mom uh, to let the grandkids play with them. And then um, it was actually um, sidetracking a little bit here. It was actually when the Lego, I want to say when the Lego documentary came out, thereabouts or at least when i saw that that the lego documentary and, and a brick and, and the and the the brickumentary um when i saw those it was probably about four years ago 2006 or i'm sorry 20 like 2016 range um i can i can give you a better day yeah like 2016 range yeah i um i just kind of started getting back into it and so i told my mom i'm like hey you know don't uh, don't donate the Legos like when when the kids are done playing with them or whatever I'll take them back. Well, she was like, well they don't they don't play with them, so I'll just I'll just give them to you now. And uh, so it was really I got really lucky that I was actually able to get all my childhood sets. But the um... oh right, so during my dark ages, the theme that I missed was the Harry Potter stuff. Oh. And um, you know I was really into the really into the Harry Potter series. Um, I started reading the books a little bit late. I started reading them probably when book f four or five came out. Um, and that's, you know, in, in, in the, in the 90s, I was a teenager. And so I, then I kind of got hooked on them and, and I started reading them. And so then I started reading them as they were released after that. And, um, but, you know, Lego didn't have Harry Potter series back then. And, and then when they did come out, I was in my dark ages and not, not buying Lego. Um, so with the latest theme released last year, I actually, was one of those that actually stood in line. And when the store opened, I went in and I bought, you know, one of everything that they had released. And, uh, and so that, that was pretty, it was, it was a fun experience. It was a fun experience. And so I have the latest of the series. I'm missing a few from this year. Um, I'll probably pick them up eventually, but I've kind of slowed down on my new purchases. Um, and I might wait until I can pick them up used. But the ones that I'm definitely interested in um, are, I think, are still yet to be released here in the U.S. and that's like the big Hedgewick uh, figure. I'm yes. Really, I think that'll be really cool, and um, and I, I kind of like that Umbridge meets meets the um, meets Hagrid's brother. 
because so it's a really big yeah like mini fig you know but it's a it's a it's a it's it's Hagrid's brother so it's a giant and it's like towering over the trees so I think that'll be a really cool set as well um so and then I do have all the castle sets I don't have the big Hogwarts the three hundred dollar four hundred dollar set um I I just it doesn't really like it's it's too big to display and it doesn't fit what I'm using it for um but I'll probably get the um, what's the other one that's about to get released? The Astronomy Tower? Yes. Yes. So I'll, I'll probably end up getting that as well. Um, because I have the other parts of the castle, and um, I've modified them, and I'm going to probably modify them some more. And what I did with them is um, my my lug and I, we built... So I had some help with, with some lug members. They come over and use my brick, and we built a giant um, plywood-sized... Um, landscape of the the Hogwarts grounds, and it's so it's eight foot long and by four feet deep, or in base plate sizes, it's um, it worked out to nine and a half base plates by four base plates, I believe, and or five. It was five base plates, so nine and a half by five base plate, and it was the entire Hogwarts ground, and it kind of worked out to being um, themed around the Goblet of Fire, and so I built a big like hillside and we put hog, all the hogwarts buildings from the sets we put them all up there and then we built a custom uh one of, one of the members built a custom uh hedge maze and um another one had the, the derm string ship set that came out a while back and someone else provided you know like uh, one of the members built custom built um hogsmeade buildings oh wow just, they were just awesome buildings and uh and we had the whole thing on display at the uh at the local bricks and minifig store and it was there for about two months, and then we disassembled it. Everyone took their pieces home, but you know all the all the landscaping was my brick, so I still have all that all in storage. And the plan was this year to use that as my kind of showpiece throughout the 2020 show year. So I don't do a lot of like I actually I've never done like a big Lego show. The only ones we have are like Brickfest Live would be the biggest show that we have, which is not really that big. Um, we do like a lot of train shows and that sort of thing where it's Legos just kind of on the, on the side. And, um, but we have quite a few of those smaller shows. And so I was going to use that as my showpiece at those shows. And then of course, 2020, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, just like everyone else, we're not doing any shows this year. Yeah. So, um, so I still have it all and I plan to, I, I would like to, once I get some time, I'd like to sit down and, and f- clean it up and, and I want to rebuild so I want to take all those castle sets and I want to rebuild them into a bigger castle and uh, and make it more of a mock or at least a very heavily modded um, build rather than just being the sets. And I think that'll I think that'll work out really nice and be really cool. So um, so my hope is to, to do that and to, to use it in the 2021 show year, hopefully. And I'm really hoping I'm really I would really like to actually get out to one of these one of these big shows. You know, Brick World Chicago, or um, or or Philly Brickfest, or even even one of the ones in Seattle, and I think that'd be a, a lot of fun. And so that's that's kind of my goal for next year. I don't know if it'll it'll happen, um, but uh, but that's that's what I'm aiming for. And I'm hoping hoping I can either use the Hogwarts build, or you know, maybe I'll think of something super cool before between now and then, and uh, I'll be able to do be able to have something there. That's awesome. I'm hoping to go to Brick Fair, Alabama next January if okay. they still plan on having it. Um, so I'm hoping that will be the case because, I mean, that's just about my 18th birthday. So okay. that's probably what I'm going to end up doing for my birthday. But um, I'm thinking I'm going to do that. And I've got a few. Um, I've been building some Half-Life stuff recently, like little vignettes and stuff. Yeah, I noticed the shirt. I was going oh, yeah. to comp- compliment yeah. you on the shirt. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I got this not too long ago, but um, did you play those games? I, I played Half-Life, and then when it came out, and I played Half-Life 2, and then I actually uh, re, um, kind of got back to my gamer roots and played Half-Life 2 again a couple years ago, and that was actually the last, pretty much the last video game I played. So, wow. I know, I, it's kind of funny because I played the whole thing, and I'm like, man, this is really easy. And I didn't realize I played the whole thing on easy mode. <laughs> So I had, to, I had to go back through, and I think I put it on hard and went back through and, and played most of it on hard. And I'm like, okay, this is more like it. Yeah. I put it on normal, and there were some parts where it's just like, 
the whole time I'm just saving like every five seconds because right, it's right. like I don't want to lose this good spot I just got to. But um, but yeah, those games are a lot of fun. I built a a few things like for the first Half Life, I built the um where it's I mean it's he does it a few times but where Gordon Freeman goes out um outside of the complex and blows up the tanks. Oh yeah. So I, I built him shooting a rocket and blowing up a tank and the the head of the tanks flying off. Then I built for Half Life two, this one's kind of been falling apart just because it's like it didn't turn out super good, but um towards the end of the game when you're running through the courtyard and there's that death ray just shooting out of the sky. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's I could not figure out for the life of me how to beat that. So it's just, um, I spent like 30 minutes getting zapped by this thing. But um, little did I know, you just have to just run across and go through the door that's obvious that you're supposed to go to. But hmm. um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I love those games. They're, they're so much fun. And um, my favorite game of all time is actually Half-Life 2 Episode 2. So... That's, I um, don't know if I've played that one. It's um, it's it's been a couple years yeah. since I've played Half Life Two. Yeah, they're they're all really great games though. If y'all haven't played them, um, they're kind of old. They're not new by any means. The first one came out in nineteen ninety nine, I believe. The second came out in two thousand four or five, and then they had Episode One and Episode Two, which came out in two thousand seven and eight. I want to say, um, but really, really great games. Um, easily some of the best games of all time just by virtually any standard. So the speaking of game mocks uh, the first the first major mock yeah I think the first large mock that I did was for Comic Con here in Denver um, also known as Denver Pop Culture Con is the proper name and I did a um, fallout shelter. Oh, wow. Uh, from, uh, it was a mix between the... the so was, I was playing Fallout 3 leading up to the Fallout 4 release. And at the same time, they to hype Fallout 4, they did had a fallout shelter video game on the, on the phone. Yeah, I played that. And Yeah, so I did a, I did a mix between Fallout 3 and a fallout, fallout shelter. So I made a little, uh, you know, it started off as a 1x3 base plate. Um, it turned into like a two by two by three base plate size um, shelter. So I, I bought a ton of tan, tan brick from the pick brick wall, and uh, just built a desert scene with a hillside, and and you can see look inside, and there it had had lights in it, um, so you can look inside and see it all lit up, and it had a you know a couple of different shelter rooms and stuff, and it was I thought it looked I, I mean for being like a, an early mock and everything, I I still think it turned out pretty good. That's awesome. I, I was I was pretty happy with it. Speaking of Fallout mocks, I guess that's something we have in common because yeah. a few years ago I built Red Rocket Gas Station. Nice. Um, I think I saw a photo of that actually. Yeah, it's uh, there's there's a few out there. Okay. Mine's kind of inspired by someone else's, but it's okay. um I just saw it and I didn't I've never had a um a system that can support Fallout 4, but when it released, I was on a ski trip with some family friends and some friends from school yeah. and there was this kid that came with us um, by himself and he bought it or pre-ordered it um, on his pc so the entire time we were there he just played it every night for like eight <laughs> hours so we just sat there and watched him play through a quarter of the game That's funny. and it was just such a fun experience but um i've I built um, Red Rocket Gas Station at some point. Um, it's it's been a while. That may have been when I was still recording videos in vertical form. Oh um, yeah, yeah. But I don't know um, if I can find that. I'll link it in the description for you guys to go see because it's it, I'm that's one of my mocks I'm most proud of. It's it was pretty cool. So, um, but. Um, that's awesome. So do you do a lot of mock building these days? Um, well, for, you know, for something like Comic-Con, it's really, <laughs> you really have to, right? It's just like going to a big Lego convention. If you go with just sets, you know, it's, I mean, I don't know if anybody's going to like laugh at you or anything, but it's <laughs> frowned upon. Yeah. Um, 
And so it's you really got to do something more. And so um, usually for those kind of events, I'll do like basically I do like one mock a year, and I use it. I I I another f- kind of faux pas thing is I, I use it throughout the year. I, I take it to all the different little little shows here in town that we support, and I take that one mock to all the different things, and I I use it. So, um, so I did that with Fallout. I actually I don't know if I ever re-displayed Fallout honestly. I think it might, that might have been a one show build. Um, it's it's out on my shelf after that for a couple of years. But um, the one I did redisplay a couple of times was I built Teen Titans from Teen Titans Go. I built the Teen Titans Tower. That's awesome. And yeah, I've so that was um, I built a, an island on a like a three base plate by three base plate size, um, and I uh, and then I built a big T shaped tower and everything. Unfortunately, I ran out of time. I wanted to, of course, add lights to the inside of it, and I wanted to add um, interior to it, but I, I just I kind of ran out of time to do any of that, and and then it just it never happened. Um, so that was that was a pretty cool build, and I actually have the tower still built. It still shows up in a couple of my videos, in the background. Um, but the island, the island, and the um, the, the the Fallout mock, they both got absorbed into the uh, Harry Potter build, so the Hogwarts build. So, um, and then before the big Hogwarts build, I actually had a small one, that was a four base plate by four base plate size, and uh, so you see each each of my builds, they're slowly getting bigger. Um, <laughs> And the, the small Harry Potter one, the small Hogwarts one, it was, I did four by four. The, the goal there was just to display the sets because Lego really likes it when you're, when we're at a, at a show and we're actually displaying a set that someone can buy. And so like, we'll have a parent come up to us and say, oh, where can I get that? And it's like, well, sorry, this is a full mock custom build. You have to go buy all the used parts. Instead, it's really nice to be able to say, oh yeah, this is set number XYZ and set number XYZ. And you can go down to the Lego store right now and you can buy all these sets. The only thing that's custom, in, in this case, this this uh, third mock, the only thing that was custom was the the base plates. I I built I I did all mills base plates, and then I did the train track going around that, and the train track was all ballasted, and the only other thing that was that was truly custom on there was the train itself, was the Hogwarts train, um, but I motorized it, so I had to make the t- I did it in the tender, so I had to make the tender a little bit bigger for that, and I added another five passenger cars to it so out a total of six passenger cars so but otherwise and that's why i tell them like yeah you can buy the train it's only going to have the one passenger car but otherwise this you know this train is available as a purchase and so it it really you know it's really nice to be able to tell the parents that like yeah you can you can you know you can go down you can buy you know all the sets they're just put together in a, in a cool display fashion here um so in that and that helps um it helps boost lego sales but it, they Lego's providing us as a group, as a lug. They provide us with free support, and so it's kind of a kind of a, a thank you back to them to you know for that for that support. Um, so that was that was the third major mock that I did, um, and I, I used that at a couple of shows, um, and then this this year was supposed to be this bigger one, but of course that didn't work out. Yeah, well that's cool that you do like one a year. I mean. With me, I I used to do them like on a daily basis, just making these low quality mocks. I don't do a ton of mocks these days, but I usually just try to find something that I really want to do and then spend a few days trying to make sign with just like less than 200 pieces, something like small, small enough to where it could fit on a base plate, just sign that I could accumulate like maybe three or four or five, and then bring them to a show eventually. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm trying to do with Half-Life right now is um, just build some stuff that um, I really want to build, and then I'm probably going to stick them all on a row of base plates and um, connect the base plates together or just bring them by themselves. So yeah, I think that's I think that's perfect. I think that's, that's a really good way to go, and, and something that I need to do is to scale down and build a smaller but get more detail because you know with these really big builds i can i can build it big but then i i struggle with getting the details yeah and and so it's you know it looks blocky or it just looks unfinished and i think having having those details in the builds really makes a big difference so so doing small and doing and focusing on the details i think is a really good way to go one thing i would recommend is what I used to do, and I've made a few really good small mocks this way, including Red Rocket Gas Station, um, was 
I would give myself, well, I wasn't super busy back then, so it wasn't me giving myself time. But if you have like a free day or something where you have nothing to do, you're bored, I would give yourself like six or seven hours and just put all that time towards one mock. And if you don't get the mock done in that time period, then you know that you took too long to finish it. And just make something with a few hundred pieces and then just try to make it as good as you can. And then I think mm -hmm. you can end up with some really good small mocks just putting what bricks you have into it. Like, you don't even have to bother ordering any parts. I rarely order parts for my mock. If I'm missing a part, I work around it and I find a different way to make it. So it's that's how I do it, and it's just... I usually am really happy with how my mocks turn out. So, um, and I recommend that just in general. That's just how I mock. So, I would say that if you want to build something very large scale, then I would definitely order stuff or buy big, pick a brick. But um, I've only had to do that like a few times before. Usually it's just straight up buying sets. Sets get parted out eventually. I use what parts I have. So. Yep, I think that's definitely definitely good advice because once you start uh, start buying on uh, you know buying the parts, it's a slippery slope. Yeah, and then if you if you're missing a part or you didn't get enough of a part, not only do you have to go back and buy more stuff, but you have to wait longer to finish your project. So it's just, I feel like that can be frustrating too, and I've seen that happen with different people. So, I mean. The usually the only stuff I order online for Lego are sets and minifigures. Very rarely will I do a Bricklink order for parts, but um, well, I guess I do the Lego Lego's ordering service too. They're they have good parts in there. So speaking of which, a little shameless uh, self promotion. I actually do run a Bricklink store as a way to extend the hobby a little bit, and I'm. Um, and uh, you can you can find me on there. I think it's listed as either Ken Lego, or if you do a search for uh, Marlow Bricks, I'm I'm on there under that as well. Is that linked in your YouTube? It is. It's linked in all my YouTubes and on my Instagram and on the course on the website. Okay, so um, I'll try to remember to link that in the description. But if not, just know that you can click on his YouTube link, and then that'll take you straight to yep um, where the, the link, link isn't on uh, on his channel. So. Awesome. So um, I think that actually about wraps up the time we have for tonight's episode. So um, this has been a lot of fun. It's been a great final episode for the Zebrick Show Season 2. Um, now I do want to say a quick thank you to everyone who's been on the podcast this season from the start of the summer on. I mean, I started asking people last December or November because I was planning on starting in February or March. But then, you know, all this stuff happened, and people's schedules got messed up, and I couldn't start until basically summer. So, um, I gotta say a big thanks to Avaki, um, Maniac for Bricks, Dalek Bricks, R Bricks, um, Aitken07, who was, who was number six? Um, oh, Ginblade8304, um... Who is seven? I've had... There's so many people that have been on the show. It's been so awesome. Um, I feel horrible that I can't remember this. We'll come back to that. There's Titanium J52. There's Ficken Bricks from Hauling and Balling. And, of course, Ken. And, oh, who is this last person? I feel Sands. so bad. Sands. Sands, of course. It was Sands. Thank you. Um, yep. So, um... All those people have been on the season. It's been so awesome. And um, all of their YouTubes, I'm going to try to link all of them down in the description. So you can go check all of them out. And um, like I said, there may be some episodes in the future. But I think that this is going to wrap it up for a little bit. So thank you all so much for watching. Have a great day. Have a wonderful week. Zebrix out.